Lemuel Steeple's story began on May 25, 1956, one of 13 children born to Edith Steeples. Named after the king described in Proverbs 31, Lemuel was quiet and polite, but didn't back down from a street fight as he came of age in the St. Louis pruitt Igo housing projects. I never liked fighting, Steeples said, but if you grew up in pruitt Igo, you had to learn how to do it. Steeples would take up the sport of boxing at the age of 13, following some friends to the gym. He would lose interest after about two years, only to return to the sport four years later. He would win local golden gloves, but his trainer, Frank Borders, always encouraged him to aspire for more. Is that all you want, Lemuel? Borders asked. Is that enough for you? Steeples then tried and failed to make the 1976 Olympic team but was inspired by the performances of Michael and Leon Spinks. Steeples decided that making the 1980 Olympic team would be his new goal. I grew up in the same neighborhood with the Spinks brothers, Steeples said. When they won the gold, I knew I had to go after it also, keep it in the neighborhood. Steeples would become a regular 139 pound entrant for the United States boxing team as they traveled to international meets. He was a good team player, described as a quiet young man who was always in a good mood. Lemuel is a clean kid, gym owner John Radisson said. He's never been in trouble with the law. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He doesn't mess around with pot or dope. I think he fights like Sugar Ray Leonard. Steeples would disagree with the last assessment, pointing out that he always fought with his hands up, while Sugar Ray would often let his hands dangle. He had the discipline of Leonard, however, training seven days a week while supporting himself as a tool planner at Emerson Electric. They would show him the specifications and he would assemble the tools needed to do the job. Driving around town in his 1972 Buick Electra, Steeples quickly became a man that the young people in the neighborhood looked up to. Lem Steeples showed that you can walk off these streets and be somebody, my retailer said. Now kids walking the street can say, Lem did it. I can do it. He would compile an amateur record of 61 wins and 5 losses, losing only to top-rated opponents like Donald Curry and Ronnie Shields before getting a shot on national television. Tough. Another of the tall, straight-up Soviet fighters. Long-armed, long-legged, with superb upper-body strength. His opponent, Young Lem Steeples. The man who was converted what was a southpaw converted back and is back to a southpaw again as you see him with the right lead in the first round steeples surprised he fought very cleverly notice the way he's using the ring and the quickness of his hands the quickness of that right moving forward in jab like fashion his task is to stay out of range of the more powerful and more experienced Lavoe, who is after all 26 years of age in the first round, Steeples did it. And Lavov is unquestionably having trouble with the southpaw stance. Ed Urbeck cautions Steeples about the use of the head. Ed Urbeck, third man in the ring in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. There are two Soviet judges scoring, one American judge in this bout. 20-point must system, three three-minute rounds. This is Olympic-style boxing. I think that was a caution. Oh, a good left by Steeples hurt Lavov. I believe that last quick stop was a caution to the Soviet in the corner not to coach their fighter during the fight. That's my judgment of what that quick call was. No question Lavov was stung. No question, Lavov was stunned by a Steeples right there. Lem Steeples fighting surprisingly well against the world champion in the light welterweight classification. He has taken the lead in this fight in terms of making the fight. This is second round action as we approach the end of the round. Smallish fellow, light welterweight, born in St. Louis, lives in St. Louis, 
boxes on the south side boxing club in St. Louis. But what a show he's put on for the first two rounds against that man, Valerie Leva, the world champion, like welterweight classification at Belgrade, Yugoslavia a year ago. Steeples, a southpaw, using that quick-handed right, has been, by my precepts, the dominant fighter in this fight. It has the makings of a big, big upset. Good left again there by Steeples. He has forced the fighter. He has made his kind of fight. The long arm Soviet fighter has not been able to score. Not up till now, anyway. That always leaves room for doubt. And room for Good left lead by Steeples. And then a short right follow up. And Steeples again. And Lavov a little bit hurt. This kid is putting on a great show. Again, the left. She mixes up those leads. By the way, Steeples almost went down. Right there. He got hit with a the left. The knees buckled. So it's back and forth in a good action fight. Lavov from nowhere scoring. Short left. Overall, this has been Steeples. However, we'll have to watch the score closely. There's a blood coming out of the left corner of Lavov's mouth. Steeples fighting a beautifully intelligent fight, mixing up the right and the left lead, fighting out of the southpaw stance, which has troubled Lavov all the way. And on his toes, moving nicely. You see him bouncing. Now going down to the stomach. Diversified attack by the young man. Very clever fight. Less than a minute to go. We're going to stay for the decision. Again, he scores. Well, I've been through so many of these competitions. So many decisions. He's claiming a low blow. Lebov is claiming a low blow, and Urbeck says no. Lebov claimed he was hurt, held his stomach, cried low blow. 30 seconds left. Well, no matter whom they give the decision to, Steeples is showing that he's quite capable of going against the best in the world in Olympic or international competition. A good fight by Steeples. Stung Lavov. Lavov's guard coming down. The left, not up there, guarding the face as much as it was. That's why that right is getting in there. Good fight. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner from the USSR, Valerie Lavov. By 1979, Steeples would become the number one ranked 139 pound amateur in the sport. He would win the National Golden Gloves title, the National AAU title, and was the Pan American Games champion, in addition to defeating future welterweight champion Milton McCrory three times. An international meet of two days was scheduled in Poland in March of 1980. Steeples insisted on making the trip. He was unhappy with his performance in the local Golden Gloves finals and wanted to be sharp for a potential Olympic run. On March 14, 1980, the plane transporting Steeples and the United States boxing team would crash just short of the runway in Warsaw, Poland. There would be no survivors among the 87 people on board. Steeples' mother said that she had a dream that a limousine arrived at her home at 5 minutes to 8 to take her to a funeral. At 5 minutes to 8 the following morning, her daughter called to tell her that Lemuel had been killed when his plane crashed. I kept wishing that I was still dreaming, Edith Steeples said. Among the dead were John Radisson, Coach Thomas Sarge Johnson, Andre McCoy, Chucky Robinson, and Carlos Palomino's younger brother, Paul. At Steeples' service, Reverend R.J. Ward told the mourners, Life is a fight. It's a fight to come to church. It's a fight to go to work. It's a fight to go home. But Lemuel fought a good fight. We can't understand why. We can't figure these things out. But God loved him just as much as we did.